Hello everybody. This is the video I've been wanting to do on my Wi-Fi range extender. I've done a couple of videos. I did the TDS fiber install. I did my Mocha network. I talked about power line networking. And I talked about connecting two routers together to extend your Wi-Fi signal across your house. Um, this is one other alternative and this is probably a less expensive, less technically knowledgeable uh, way to extend your home Wi-Fi network. And this is just with the range extender. So I picked up this TP-Link. It's, uh, it's an RE305. It's an AC1200 Wi-Fi range extender. And so it says it does 300 megabits per second and 867 megabits per second. And that's on the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz bands. And it is dual band. And it does have a 100 megabit Ethernet port on it. So we'll open this up. And we get the actual device. And again, it has the 100 megabit port. It has antennas. It has lights. Uh, the lights are power signal, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. It has a, a WPS button in case you want to do this setup directly with the WPS. I'm going to do the setup actually through the web interface on this. And anything else in the box. And a quick install guide. So that's it. Real nice and simple. And what we'll do is we'll get this powered on and then uh, what I'm planning to do is I'm actually going to connect this to my network uh, using, like I said, the web-based interface and I'm going to use my, uh, my little tablet PC here. It should be plenty fast for that. And then we'll also test the uh, hardwire connection once we get a decent signal and then I'll go ahead and I did some filming, and I'm going to put that up next. I did some quick videos showing my Roku device in the garage. I have a TV in the garage. That device is signal strength without this extender, uh, just uh, with two floors and four walls in between it and my router. And then I also walked around the house a little bit, and I got about... I. Um, I went into about four different locations to include the garage where the, where the Roku is and down here in the studio office just to see what the base signal strength was on my Wi-Fi router. And then I'll go ahead and do another video showing any increase in the actual signal. So with that, I'll get everything connected and uh, be right back. So once we get the actual TP-Link plugged in and powered up, we're going to go ahead and look for it on our Wi-Fi network. And this is my normal Wi-Fi network. And here we go. We have TP-Link Extender 2.4 and TP-Link Extender 5 gigahertz. I'll go ahead and select TP-Link Extender 5 gig. This should allow me to connect to it. And then once I'm connected to it, it'll open up the web-based interface. And I can create a login and password for the device. All right, so let's go ahead and find our network. Oh, 
All right. Here is our 2.4 gigahertz network. And here's our 15 gigahertz network. <laughs> 5 gigahertz network. Now they both have the same SSID. Because I have a dual band router. So, everything's saved. So we'll go ahead and reboot and see if all our settings took. And let me see if we show up on the router. We'll check our connected clients list. And there's our RE305. So it gave it an internal IP of 192.168.0.142. And let's see what we're looking like. All right, so we are connected to the router. On the 2.4 and on the 5. We can see what channel we're connected to. Strong signal on the 2.4, good signal on the 5. Currently, none of my clients, nothing in my house is connected to the extender. What I would like to do, since we know the extender's up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a hardwired connection to the extender. I'm actually going to use the LAN port and I'm going to disable the Wi-Fi on my tablet. Wi-Fi's off. I'm going to connect directly to the LAN port on my TP-Link extender. And we have a connection. We have internet access. And I'll log back in real quick. Let's see if it shows a client. Well, it doesn't show a Wi-Fi client since we're not technically Wi-Fi. But let's go ahead and test the speed on this. 
we'll just go to fast.com and see what we get. I would call that successful, especially considering this is just a 100 megabit port. I'll go ahead and do it one more time. And as we can see, we are pretty much maxing out that port speed. So we actually are connected to the device, to the TP-Link device. Everything is working well. So what I want to do now is I'm going to reposition this upstairs in my living room area, which is about halfway between the garage where I'm going to have that Roku and the actual router itself. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what kind of signal strength we get out there. We're going to do some Wi-Fi signal testing. We'll do some strength test. So right next to the router from what they call perfect to strong. And I'm going to walk a couple rooms past. Now that I have two walls in between myself and the router. Now I'm in my living room and I'm going to put the extender slash repeater here. Okay, it's still registered and strong, 57. And we did check the Roku strength. I'm going to go out and check that. I'm in the garage and we've got about four walls between us. What do they call it? General to weak. And this of course is before our Wi-Fi extender or repeater, you can call it whatever you like. All right. And again, here in the living room, just checking the signal strength, we're getting a strong signal on the Wi-Fi. And again, this device is using the same SSID as my router, so it's all under the same name. All right, so we're here in the living room with the Wi-Fi extender, and I am plugged into the Ethernet port. And let's see what kind of speed we get in this location. And we'll run it one more time. So again, we're pretty much maxing out this uh, 100 megabit port. So that was using the wired 100 megabit ethernet port. Uh, let's go ahead and pull this away from the wall just so there's no interference. And go ahead and check our Wi-Fi speed here. And pretty nice, 120 megabits per second on the Wi-Fi. And the interesting thing is when I go into the settings inside the device, I am showing my tablet as a client on the five gigahertz band. All right, just going to go ahead and do a quick check of our Roku connection on the 5G, and this is without the Wi-Fi extender. And this is in my garage, so the Wi-Fi is at the other end of the house. I'm at the opposite end again, and inside the garage, so I've got one, two, three, four walls between myself and the wireless router.
All right, and so we're on our McSally network, and we are showing 14 megabits per second. And once more, we're checking the network speed out here in the garage with the extender on. And before we had a weak to medium signal and uh, we're getting a strong signal now. So definite improvement. We'll check the Roku speed and we'll check the uh, tablet one more time. Check in the Roku device with the extender. So we're showing a good connection with 14 megabits. Again, we have one, two, two walls and part of a floor in between us. On the actual extender itself, we show that now my phone has connected, the uh, Roku streaming stick in the garage is connected, and the tablet is connected. So devices do automatically connect directly to this when it is the strongest signal on the extended. And we're checking our fast.com speed out here in the garage. Again, with two walls and a floor in between us and the extender. And we'll try one more time just to make sure we're getting some consistency. There we go. Not bad for a signal going through a couple of walls and a floor. So um, at the end of the day, I am getting better Wi-Fi coverage in my home and outside in the garage. Uh, if I had the uh, Wi-Fi range extender out here, I'd have a wired port. And uh, that could come in handy if I had to switch out here, if I had any hardwired devices. Uh, but right now, I think I've shown that I have actually extended and improved my home Wi-Fi coverage. Again, it's not like drastically, tremendously night and day difference in coverage. But I think for the price of the extender, I think it's, it's worth the price of admission. Thanks for joining in, folks.